We got a lot of cool events going on. We brought in a lot of guests, a lot of them thanks to you. Uh, so I know you wanted to talk about that. So why don't you uh, let us know what's been going on? Oh, great. Yeah, I thought that this would just be a good opportunity to kind of celebrate the positive things. See, I'm using the word positive again. <laughs> um, <laughs> celebrate the positive things that have gone on, uh, especially in the music department. I think they're, uh, oh, here we go. The sound just came up on the, uh, look at that. We were having audio problems earlier. Um, uh, so yeah, because the, the most important thing is creating a really valuable experience for the students here. That's the number one thing. And uh, let's see if I can perhaps do a screen share, okay. uh, kind of reminding it, uh, host disabled. Huh. Seems like okay, they're disabled. Have a couple if this is our first run, okay. Ah, so there, you know, there, there might be a technical thing here and there. It worked yesterday, folks. It says host disabled attendee screen sharing. Gosh. Ah, someone is disabling it, but <laughs> maybe I'll, I could just describe it anyhow. Yeah, go for it. How's that? You know if, as if I were, if I were to not be able to see, tell me what it looked like. Okay, well, it, look, it, it looked uh, very nice, uh, but we kind of took you through a timeline of what happened during the whole school year. So uh, at first there was the uh, convocation in September and we gave out a, an honorary doctorate to a great trumpet player, world-renowned trumpet player, Carl Fisher, who's Billy Joel's uh, trumpet player. And that was really, it's quite amazing. He, he got, he played as well. Uh, he performed a song for everyone. And then also at that same ceremony, longtime professor Peter Rogin, uh, legendary oh. professor Peter Rogin was honored, uh, was given honorary doctorate as well. And he performed He's actually, a very popular professor. I've actually been told. I think you, your screen share should work now if you want to show some photos. Oh, of great! That. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to choose that right now. Oh. Uh, okay, great. We just have that corner. If you could, uh, I think there we go. Okay. How are we looking now? Looks good. Okay, great. Uh, so first, yeah, there's Carl uh, at convocation back in September, and that was quite an event and the students really enjoyed it. And here's Peter Rogin. And this is from that same, that same event. Uh, Peter was a very popular professor here. He was the head of the guitar department. Uh, if you run into any guitarist around in, in the Long Island area of pretty much of any age, uh, they'll say, oh, is Pete Rogin still there? You know, he's very, very well known. Yeah, very much so. And a great person, taught me a lot about teaching. Uh, I learned so much from him. Uh, so that was great to see. Uh, next up, uh, I think this was also in September, I think September 19th. This is when Mike Stern, actually one of the all-time great guitarists, um, incredibly enough, was able to visit us and fit us in his schedule. And what was really great about that is that he spent an entire hour taking questions and then he played something. Oh, and when awesome. he performed, actually the bass player was an undergrad. Uh, his name is Chris, as you can oh. see in the photo. And so what an experience. Uh, as a college sophomore, he gets to play with Mike Stern. So who who had Mike Stern played with? I'm, I'm not too familiar. Well, Miles Davis, and then he had a solo career, you know, uh, Grammys and, and whatnot. So, um, yeah, so uh, it was really quite an interesting experience. And uh, and then those are the other two uh, individuals there are professors. That's Frank Bellucci, our drum professor, uh, incredible musician, and Saint O on keyboards, and she's quite talented so um it was quite quite a band and mike really enjoyed himself what a nice guy that's great man um okay so next up uh these are what we call performance classes it's something we started doing at common hours where the group of everyone on the same instrument gets a chance to get together and hear each other and this was a great idea actually dr miller thorne um, had this idea and it really worked out tremendously well and uh, the students are just really supportive of each other doing this and it was a lot of fun we've been uh doing this um i think there was going to be another one scheduled but of course they're more scheduled in the fall coming up sure so students playing for each other and uh this was uh, okay this is when ozzy melendez visited us uh he's a trombone player and a ranger just uh another world-class musician wow. traveling all over the world playing with mark anthony and j-lo and diana ross what a cool thing for students too. I mean, like, 
as far as if, as a jazz person too, I mean, New Orleans is like the epicenter of where everything started, you know? And so, so to have it all be there, you know, uh, an event in that city as a guitar ensemble that's very rarely asked to go, that's a, that's a big deal, man. That's really incredible. New Orleans is like the epicenter. Yeah. Very, started, very much so. You know? And not and only so, were so there schools performing there, but at night, uh, so after dinner, they were able to see concerts by the biggest names, like Victor Wooten was there. So yeah. they had a chance to actually see the greats uh, perform. Yeah. You know, in addition to performing themselves. That's fantastic. That's and, great. Uh, yeah, and as a chaperone, it, I'm telling you, it was a good experience. No one caused any trouble. Really nice kids. I just wanted to say that. That's it. <laughs> Put uh, your two cents in there, good. No ruffians? No, not at all. <laughs> um, and uh, okay, the last slide here is we had another really uh, just incredible uh, musician visiting us. This is Scott Sherrard, uh, musical director for the Greg Allman Band. He's in the middle here and he was uh, nice enough to stop by. And uh, as you can see here, he, um, he asked two of our students, you know, if anyone wanted to volunteer and come up and play with him. And uh, it was really nice. Uh, I gave them a chance. They played like a blues song together, and uh, he helped each of them out, gave them advice, and uh, so that was a really nice thing. To and you know there are going to be more. Maybe I'll stop the sh screen sharing now. Sure, I think we're good. Yeah, uh, did that work? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so obviously, you know, we're going to try to do more of this this coming fall. So there, we'll try to really plan a power-packed lineup. That's great. I mean, you always seem to, Steve. You know, I, you know, I, I love talking to you about music and a million things, but you always seem to have really, really, really uh, like fantastic things going on for all of the guitar students and all of your students in general. So that's awesome. Well, well, we're trying. That's the idea. We want to, we want to really have the students to have a great experience here. Sure. And uh, and it's even better when they get a chance to actually play with them. So you know, getting advice from them is great, or hearing a speech, but yeah. uh, to play with them. That's, uh, it was pretty amazing. Um, That's great. I know it's, yeah, it's made a good long lasting impression on them. So, so I know one, one thing we wanted to go over today was, um, you do some composition work and arrangement work in a program called Sibelius, correct? Right, right. Yeah. And, so, and you know, I know you wanted to kind of walk us through it a little bit. I mean, I'm, I'm slightly familiar with Sibelius. I'm an audio person and a music person, but you use it to, to write arrangements and charts and stuff for a lot of the things you worked on. So I know you wanted to go through some sure. of that. Well, yeah, it's used for many things. So, so I do, I teach arranging classes at FTC. And um, one of the things I do professionally is that I write and arrange uh, music for jazz ensembles for high schools and colleges. And it's done the same way. It's done on Sibelius. So you'll line up your instruments on the left and um, input the notes with the mouse, or some people use a keyboard. Um, and in this instance, I just pulled up a few things because I didn't want to make it like this long Sibelius lesson. Uh, but I pulled up a few things from that I was working on for the guitar ensemble coming up in September to just get like a sneak peek at that. If anyone is not familiar how these songs are put together, it might might help. Um, That's great. Yeah, let's get, do it. Know, let's get, get an introduction to that. For sure. Uh, so I'll have to do another share the screen. No problem. You take your time. It should be up. Should be up right now. Okay, right. Oh, now there we go. I can see it. We good? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so this example in particular was for our guitar ensemble for uh, Professor Kelly. And um, in his, I, I believe it's called the Jazz Guitar Studio Orchestra. So there are guitarists that we have many really, uh, you know, really good guitar players, uh, at student guitar players at, at FTC. Uh, but in particular, a group like this, uh, he, Professor Kelly, selects our best music readers to be in this group so it's based on how well you know you can read uh read the notes and it and some of the songs really requires a lot of expertise and uh he does a great job of drilling them from week to week uh this one in particular i hope the sound comes through but this is just um a west Mon it's from a west montgomery recording and cool. as you can see uh, you know the guitars are lined up here and just the bass uh, in the group there's no drummer no keyboard or anything so it's really the guitars supplying all the all the action
so that's the idea. So, and then what he'll do is uh, he'll pass out these uh, Sibelius files to each student so the student can work with that. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, they could even work on the parts and slow it down in case, you know, it might, they might feel it's a little bit brisk at first. Yeah. So, <laughs> and have a click track. So they can adjust the speed to whatever, you know, however familiar they are with the song at the time and keep taking the tempo and gradually creeping it up until it gets to the point where the group can start to play it at, at the fast tempo. And getting five guitarists to kind of be perfectly in sync is a lot of hard work. So I've seen those rehearsals and uh, they, they work very hard. At, I'm sure they do. Together. I have to ask you a question. So did, did you create this chart yourself or did you find the chart? No, I created it myself, but it's yeah. it's from just listening to the recording. Sure. So even in the past, uh, Peter Rogin would say, oh, I need a rendition of, uh, could be anything, Mona Lisa by uh, Nat King Cole or something like that. So we try to take it and adapt whatever the recording is. It could be orchestral, right? So, and then adapting it for five guitars and trying to make it work. And some of the songs uh, would, in, would have vocalists and then the guitars kind of supply the, the backup, the accompaniment. So it could be any style of music. How, how long does it take to write a chart like that? I mean, that's got to take a, quite, a, quite an amount of time, I would think. Uh, it, it really depends on what is involved. Something like this may just take, you know, three or four hours. Okay. To put the whole thing together. Yeah. Um, because what happens is you see how uh, for the student, uh, for the music majors that might be listening, uh, you see, at least in this beginning section, everyone is playing the same rhythms. So I'm able to take that passage and copy and paste Sweet. and put it for everybody. And then I just go back to each part and adjust whatever the note is. So there's a yeah. lot of copying and pasting that, that really helps once you get to know the program well. Um, and then the ones for the larger group, like a 19 piece, a big band group, like those take, you know, several weeks to try to perfect and go over every detail. Uh, let's see, I think there's another one that, there's another one that I wanted to show you too. I was working okay. on, oh, wait, okay. Oh. How about, how about this one? Oh, yeah, you were, we left screen share. Oh, okay, I know, I, I kind of had to, I think. So uh, oh, uh, let me go yeah. back to that. that I gotcha. No problem. Uh, okay, here's another one. This is another one I think we're going to play uh, in the fall. Oh, cool. And this is um, this is actually from a uh, Les Paul recording that I thought was really nice. Uh huh. And um, it's going to involve some of our vocalists uh, singing, you know, singing the uh, Mary Ford uh, parts on this. So the guitars are kind of. Uh, it's not meant to be an exact replication but it's just meant to kind of pay tribute to the music so it's kind of it's based on the les paul recording of bye bye blues um let's see if i can start this i'm trying my best ryan you're doing a great job right now steve i want you All to right, know that. I appreciate that, <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> let me ask you a question if you don't mind multitasking as i ask you this oh you got your transport bar i oh, mean yeah. With, with, with Les Paul and Mary Ford, mu Ford music, I mean, that stuff is so well known for some of the first music that was being like overdubbed. So they actually had multiple like vocals and guitars on each track. Like how, how tricky was that for you to pick them apart and kind of chart them out one by one? Um, well, it wasn't really that tough because I wasn't trying to try to get every single thing that he, that Les Paul tracked. Okay. Uh, that, that would, that would require you know, even with a really good ear, that would require uh, months of yeah, would, <laughs> uh, yeah. get that. Or even because of the recording quality, sometimes not every part is audible, mm -hmm. uh, if you know what I mean. Sure. Uh, detectable. So um, this is just mainly taking some of his main guitar lines that he played on this song and creating chords that all five guitar players can kind of play at that time. Okay. Um, so rather than a chord being played by a guitarist, you know, a guitar, you hear five or six notes in a chord, mm -hmm. and this is just spreading them out 
so that five people are each only playing one note. Interesting. That's um, cool. I don't know if I can find an interesting part to this song. Let's see. So this is during when the voice, when the female vocals is will be coming in a bit. That's cool. And then the guitar one would have a solo here, and then the other guitar players are kind of playing the accompaniment. Oh, this is fun. This is cool. So that's the idea. I think, you know, I think this is going to be something very fun yeah. for everyone to try because then it's a matter of uh, everyone getting these parts up to speed, listening to the recording, and then also getting some of the singers involved and then, you know, getting them to uh, learn the parts as well. So then at the, you know, any concert at the end of the semester, I think this is going to be something pretty interesting. That's super cool, Steve. That's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're very welcome. And, uh, you know, there are a lot more that, there are, you know, really, there are limitless possibilities. I, I've done, you know, many, to help, you know, with Peter Rogine, and, um, and a lot of them are, are jazz or uh, Latin music or, you know, really old-time stuff. But anything modern, I'm open to that. So if the kids or Professor Kelly, they want to do any, um, I don't know, name some rap artists, Post Malone. <laughs> The oh, look at you. I'm, I'm open to doing, excuse me? It's a look at you dropping some names. No big deal. I'm uh, trying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that's the idea. You know, we, we certainly would like to include uh, any um, current music and <clears throat> make that work somehow. I think that would be a lot of fun to do and a good experience for everyone. That's cool. That's great, Steve. Um, I think we have um, a couple guests waiting in line to actually... Um, talk to you and play around with you a little bit. Um, oh, that's great. I, oh, we do. All right. What's up, man? Can you hear me? Hello. Hey, guys. What's going on? Not much. Oh, Rob Previtt is here. Rob Previtt's here. How you doing, Rob? Looking good, Rob. Thank you very much. <laughs> how, are, how are you holding up with all this stuff, man? You doing okay? Uh, it's, it's okay. Yeah? Right. Yeah. So, um, did you, did you, I know you and Steve were talking about playing some stuff. Steve, maybe you should take it from here. Sure. Well, uh, we were using Zoom, and obviously what many people will say, it's very difficult to actually play together. So one idea is to um, get the students involved and, and uh, you know, we'll take a listen to some of the things they're working on. And then if there's any advice I could give or demonstrate, um, you know, that would be great. So, um, so Rob, uh, what have you been working on let's and let's see if this works technically if we can <laughs> yeah sure you know hear him and the backing track uh so rob what have you been up to i've been i've been uh practicing for the past little while just trying to uh get some solo ideas out over uh blue bassa and uh all right yeah so i have a backing track set up hopefully it's at a good volume where everyone can hear it and then uh we'll see how that goes if you'd like me to begin, I'll... I'll sure, start. anytime. Hi, okay. right, Ryan, is that good? Yeah, I, th I think so, man. Okay. <laughs> Can you do that? Yeah. Sounds like we have a good player here. Oh, thank, you. thank you. All right. So, um, Rob, I'm not sure if you have something on your Zoom. It says turn on, uh, turn on the original sound. 
Do you have an option like that? It kind of sometimes it prevents the sound from cutting out. Uh, but I still heard most of what you were playing. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. What was that called again? Turn on original sound. Should be in the upper left. Or it could be in your um, uh, in your preferences for audio. Um, but regardless, um, I really liked what you played. Um, very good timing. Thank you. And um, and a lot of uh, kind of a blues oriented approach. Yes. Very nice. And when the key changed to D flat. Uh, you have chose a lot of nice notes as well. So you're obviously someone who listens a lot uh, as opposed to only studying scales, which is great. It sounds like you have a great ear and I'm very impressed. Um, so say when, when you get to the, how well can you hear? I can hear. Okay, great. So when you switch to the other part that's in D flat major, what you could do is maybe practice some passages uh, like when you're on the five chord, which is A flat dominant to add altered notes because if you're comping that song and you have E flat minor on A flat don't you sometimes alter those notes yeah. right instead of playing like a bar chord like this so so now when you're in D flat uh, so uh, I forgot what I played Right, so instead of just only staying in the scale, so that's where those notes come from. When you hear somebody comping and playing a chord and altering, right, sharp nine, flat nine, those notes could actually be in your runs. So if you have, um, right, did you hear the notes that were out of key? Yeah. So you can work on those a little bit. So listen to other people's solos. What, what do they do over that chord? And what do they do over the G7 on the first part? Okay. So, uh, so just keep that in mind. So whatever notes you alter on the chord, you could also use in your solo. Playing. But yeah, outstanding job, Rob. Thank you very much. Yeah, we have, we have a good player here. Yeah, we do. Rob, that was great, man. You sound awesome, as always, man. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Do you have any other questions for Steve or are we going to move on to the next person? I think we can move on. All right. Well, Rob, thank you. You stay safe out there, man. Good luck. And we'll talk soon. Sure. All right. That was next nice. Up, yeah, I think it was great. Um, next up is uh, Chunbo Chang. I think Chunbo just needs to unmute his microphone. Uh, but once he does that, he'll be good to go. Chunbo, are, he is good. Chunbo, how are you doing, buddy? I'm good. How are you? Good, man. Good to see you. You look great back there, Chunbo. You're in a beautiful place. You look very happy. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm living with the uh, with Sam Kratz, if you know him. Oh, who? Sam Kratz. Oh, oh Sam Kratz. Yeah, yeah, I'm living in his home. <laughs> oh, cool, man. Yeah. That's yeah. really great. Yeah, Steve, yeah. I'll let you take it from here, buddy. No, I was wondering where you were, Chumbo. That's great. It's good to hear that. Yeah, thanks. So yeah. I know that for those who don't know, Chumbo is a very good student and uh, an excellent vocalist at the school. So a lot of times people in the FTC community see him singing at the Dr. Ballon, those famous jazz jams that he, um, that he has during Common Hour. Absolutely. Um, so Chunbo, uh, what are your, uh, what have you been working on or what would you like to you know, kind of get some advice on? Uh, so I'm doing the C jam blues. Um, not very C fast. C jam? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just start. Sure.
Jumbo. Very nice. Great Thank job, Jumbo. Yeah, Jumbo's. Yeah, and what's really cool is that um, you're putting to use some of the things that we spoke about. Because at first, uh, playing over the blues is um, it's harder than one may think. Because sometimes yeah. when people learn how to play over the blues, they learn just one scale called the minor pentatonic, and they'll just use that. Right? And then sometimes you'll read in a textbook that you need to use what's called the mixolydian mode, right? Mm -hmm. And go. So about a month back, Chunbo, I remember you were just using mostly the mixolydian. Yeah. <laughs> right? And that doesn't sound like something B.B. King would play, right? Right. Or, right, or Albert King or, or Stevie Ray Vaughan, right? Mm -hmm. Um so what I really, what I liked about what you did and what I want you to continue to do is kind of, you had a mixture of the, the minor pentatonic and then kind of using the regular major third intermingled with the minor third from the pentatonic. So instead of going, you went. So I, I really want you to continue that. And, um, you know, and a few other you know, details I would say going forward is um, you could just play a little bit more assertively, like with, with your with your picking. You could even get more energy into it. So say at the first part of your solo, you're playing more calmly, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe toward the end, you can play maybe higher and with a little more energy so your solo can kind of go on a trajectory. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, I really I liked what you did too. We have some great players here, Ryan. Sure do, man. Chumbo, that was really awesome, man. Thank you. You're very welcome. Do you have any other questions for Steve Chumbo? Uh, not for now. I'm good for now. Okay. okay. Well, listen, man. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, you stay safe, and we'd like to have you back sometime. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Great job, Chumbo. All right. Take care, Chumbo. Yeah. Um. Up next is uh Matt Nicolino. Matt. If you could unmute us, he's unmuted. How you doing, Matt? Oh, you're, you're a little low, Matt. Uh, yeah, I have to run it through a uh, external microphone right now that's hooked up to my amp. Oh, okay. So if I step over here, you can. Oh, now we can hear you, Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool, man. So, uh, what do you got for us today? Uh, I'm gonna play some Lover Man today. Uh, okay. Lover Man. Yeah, can you hear me a little bit better? Oh, that was way better, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I switched back to the uh, internal oh, mic. Cool, thanks, man. Uh, but yeah, I got some I got some lover men for you, uh, for you gentlemen today. Cool. Where are you right now, Matt? It is a dark place. It looks cave-like. I like it. <laughs> this, is, this is my cave. This is where the work gets done. This is where it <laughs> happens. Awesome. Uh, start whenever? Yeah, you go for it whenever you're ready. Thank you. 
That was awesome, dude. Yeah, I definitely like the the tone you're getting out of the instrument there. It's your fingers. Good. Good job. I'm wondering oh, if he heard my compliment. Did he hear my compliment? No, I didn't hear anything good. But... <laughs> <laughs> Matt, can you switch back to that other mic so we can hear you? Yeah, I didn't hear anything you guys were saying, so. Awesome. All right, how about well, that? You did a great job. I'll let Brian give you the critical, but you sounded great, man. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah, you're getting excellent tone out of the instrument, Matt. I'm trying. I'm trying to play with that, that assertiveness, regardless of the yeah. notes are correct or even nice. Or... <laughs> I'm hearing a lot of correct notes, though, Matt, I will tell you at this time. Uh, <laughs> so what I'm hearing is, yeah, you are getting a little bit more power out of your picking hand. Uh, and then you're also playing softly at times. So the great dynamics are really shaping what you're doing, which is excellent. Um, and re really good tone out of the guitar as well. Um, so a couple of things I, I think could help you out. There's a spot where it goes F7 sharp nine. Yeah. With a B yeah. Type dominant. So there, you don't necessarily have to play like always an altered scale. like. You could just stay and play like kind of an F blues, like. So that's kind of, if you watch um, someone like Barney Kessel, he'll kind of treat that just like being in an F blues for two bars. Okay. So if you have the D minor and the G and the G, mi uh, G minor and the C, and then on that chord, Uh, what did I do before? Like, I think that's even something Barney did on that song. Um, kind of your pinkies on the octave F. And then on the second string, right. And then on the second string, a B flat and an A flat. Yeah. So, so in other words, when you have a chord like that, like F7 sharp nine, of course you can, but it's kind of nice also to have kind of a blues style on that. Um, and on the first few things that you, um, first few chords of that, I really like what you did. So to continue with that, Matt, I would say you could think about being um, even more thematic, like creating these little themes that repeat. Yeah. Um, so if you had, so it's like D, it's D minor and G, right? First two solo, yeah. you had like, uh, and G minor. Like almost the same thing twice. You know what I mean by that? Yeah. Yeah, because that, it's a, it's, it's a jazz standard, but it's got like a, a lot of blues feel to it. So yeah, like the phrasing is really important to, to drive and solidify. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and even if you're using kind of jazz language on it, you could kind of think about using the same phrase, kind of. Uh... And then on the same, and then on the other chord. You know, to kind of create little themes going on in the solo that, that maybe you might even use later, uh, but that kind of helps the phrasing a little bit by doing things like that yeah yeah awesome. awesome so if you if you're playing along and it's you know obviously you're improvising right and you feel like hey that idea was actually pretty impressive i think i'll go with that so just continue it try to do it even when the chord changes and try okay. to just change it according to where the chord is going yeah, me, me and Ramon have been working on that. He's like, yeah, just pick a tune, pick one uh, particular phrase and just follow all the changes through the, you know, the entire tune even. So yeah. I'm trying to work that into my routine. Yeah, it sounds like it's working. Cool. Yeah, so you're actually, you're speaking of Romano. That's Tony Romano, who's uh, one of, he's a really outstanding guitar player. Um, and he's one of our guitar professors. So okay. uh, he's lucky to have you as a student, sir. 
I'm, I'm lucky to have him and you and the rest of the guitar teachers and the non-guitar teachers. You got to go back. Well, keep doing what you're doing. I shall. Thank you, yeah, Brian. That was great, man. Your, your guitar is beautiful, by the way. Is that a BB King Gibson? That is. That is. That's a, a real Lucille right there. Yeah, man. That's an awesome. It sounds great, man. Seriously. Thanks. You did a great job. Listen, Matt, thank you for joining us, man. We're, we're definitely going to have you back at some point for sure, but you did a great job, okay? Awesome. Let me know. Let me know. All right, you stay safe, Matt. Take care, buddy. All right, you too, guys. Take Thanks, it easy. Matt. Thanks, Matt. Steve, you, sir, are awesome. Uh, that was fun. That was really cool. I mean, you really do have some amazing players, uh, you know, playing with you guys. That, that's really incredible. Yeah, you know, and on top of that, it was, it was just fun to see them again. <laughs> well, it's been it's been a while so uh, you know but all three of those guys had like very uniquely different styles you know so it was cool to see how you know under your guidance they kind of like come out a little bit it was really cool it's definitely interesting yeah and everyone is different and they all have different strengths and different things that they need to improve so, and all the teachers do it the same way especially the, the guitarists that you know we're trying to get everyone to uh, be on par because you know when they graduate the people they're competing with are you know guys my age so yeah. you yeah. know so that's the way we look at it what what do we need to do to get you know get them going in the, in the positive direction and what things do they need to work on uh, and everyone's different so there's always a different you know you may have a plan for a lesson but when you hear someone for the first time you kind of sometimes have to change some of the things in your preset plan or speech to kind of fit what they need to hear Right. Well, it's like improvising, right? I mean, you, you, you have to kind of be on your toes and listening all the time. So that's, that's great. Yeah. As a matter of fact, one of those students, Matt, um, you know, sometimes I would ask him, at, you know, during the week, hey, what did you do this weekend? And I thought he was going to say, like, I played um, Lego Star Wars on the computer or something. You know, okay. like you play, it's going to answer with some kind of video game. He's, oh, no, I listened a lot to Jim Hall and Joe Pass and Wes Montgomery, and I was trying to figure out their phrases. Man, I was saying, that's a good answer. That's a great answer. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, work. I didn't do that this weekend. I did nothing. That's a way <laughs> answer. That's crazy. That's cool. He was a great player, man. I've, you know, I've heard uh, the other two guys play before, and they're fantastic. But Oh, uh, unbelievable. Yeah, all of them are. Um, and as a matter of fact, uh, one of our combo, and we have combo groups as well. They're smaller jazz groups with five or six people in them, and Professor Lobenstein is the instructor. And the top combo that we have actually has two guitarists. One is the first gentleman we heard, Rob, and mm -hmm. then Chunbo as well. Cool. And they're both in that top combo and, uh, you know, super students. Yeah. Well, you're doing a great job, man. They're, I mean, they're clearly uh, fantastic guitar players. You're molding them in a, in a nice way, man. That's really well, great. Well, they're doing a good job, you know, because they're working yeah. hard. I mean, you can tell someone, you can give someone advice, but they obviously have to take it. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So. Cool. Well, Steve, listen, thank you so much, man. It has been a pleasure speaking to you as it always is. You're um, very welcome. Great job. Thank you for joining us on our first one of these. We hope to have you back soon. Oh, I appreciate that. And I know some of the students were probably expecting a few dad jokes, but I'll save that for another time. <laughs> I think that might be okay. We need to get some new material. So, you know, I mean, unless you want to toss one up or you can, you know what, you save it. No, no, I think we'll wait on it. You save it. <laughs> All right, Steve, thank you so much, man. You take care, okay? You too. Thanks so much. This was fun. Thanks, man. Absolutely. Um, guys, that is basically the end of our first show here. Um, thank all of you for joining us. Again, this is going to happen. Um, Five Times Online Common Hour is going to happen every Tuesday and Thursday at 1230. Uh, this upcoming Thursday show, two days from now at 1230, we've got a couple really interesting things going on. Our first guest is going to be uh, a lady named Joanna Gotchik. She's a tattoo artist. So, you know, we were really thinking, trying to think a little differently for you guys. We have a, an integrated computer graphics program. Well, they do a lot of design and different software. Well, so do a lot of other artists. So a friend of mine who actually happens to live not too far from where I am personally sequestered at the moment uh, is going to come by and show us how she actually designs for tattoo work uh, um, on her Mac and we're going to run through the whole process, you know, how design start, how the design process works, things like that. So that's part one. Part two is actually going to be, and, and the second half of the show will be a musical performance from FTC student Robin Harris performing with some special guests. So Robin is going to probably sing for a whole bunch of time for us. Uh, I'm going to ask him a couple questions, but he'll be giving us a live show on Thursdays 
FTC Online Common Hour. So um, any questions or anything, guys, feel free to get in touch. Um, for all any info about five times in general, make sure you check out ftc.edu. And students, please keep checking your five towns emails for messages from your faculty mentors. Um, or just any info in general, you're going to really get it that way, anything that's going out directly. So make sure you keep checking your emails, guys. Um, thank everyone so much. Uh, President Cohen, all of our guitar players, Steve Brighty, um, everybody involved with this, Tom Calandrillo, Mike Calavalli. This is our maiden voyage, and I feel like we got off pretty well. We're a little bumpy things here and there, but overall we did okay. Um, we will see you guys on Facebook Live, Common Hour, every Tuesday and Thursday at 1230. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And we will see you soon. Watch Tune us in every Tuesday, every week and Thursday on Tuesdays and Thursdays p.m. for a new Common Hour on Five Towns College Facebook or Five Towns YouTube page.